It took the word of God to bring us into where we're at now, and it's going to take the word of God to keep us day in and day out. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, the word of God is a food for us. Those who are spiritual minded, the word of God. We need it. The spirit of God within us need the word of God. Hallelujah. And you and I need the word of God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Brother Michael, if you put the message up on the screen, hallelujah. Let us read. When Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea, Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And they said, Some said that thou art John the Baptist, some Elias, and others, Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He saith unto them, But who say ye that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Thank you, Jesus. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Bar-Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed it unto ye, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say also unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Father, in the most precious name of Jesus, now we ask your anointed to be showered down one more time, Almighty God. Let your unadulterated word come forth today, Almighty God. Let it not set upon death ears, Almighty God. Hallelujah. But let the ears be open, Lord God. Let the heart receive what is going to come from on high. For, Lord God, we cannot do anything without you. As one writer said, I can do all things through Christ that strengthened me. Now, Lord God, we ask you to open up our understanding, open our ears, and open our heart, Lord God. And let us receive your unadulterated word. Hallelujah. With faith and truth, oh God, that we shall be lifted up and carried to higher heights and deeper depths. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. And amen. You may be seated in the presence of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Taken from those scriptures that was just read, hallelujah. The good, the bad, and the ugly. Uh, now, now, first of all, let me, let me clarify something here. We are not talking about your physical being ugly. We are talking about your attitude, your characteristic. Hallelujah, not be uh, ugly. The good, the bad, and the ugly. Y'all may not know, hallelujah, but some of the disciples that was called, some of them was good, some were bad, and some were ugly. But what you talking about, Bishop, I mean, you, who was ugly? Who was bad? Well, first of all, hallelujah, Judas was ugly because of his character. Hallelujah. Brother Peter, hallelujah, was bad because he cut somebody's ear off. And then somebody else was good because they served God. But I want to let you know what the church is. A lot of people go around here called this sanctuary the church. Well, let me tell you this. Those beautiful windows and the pews, the organ and thing is not what praise God. It's you and I, hallelujah, who have made in his likeness and his image, hallelujah. Sometimes, hallelujah, in the house of God, uh, hallelujah, we try to be good. Sometimes we are bad 
and other times we are ugly. Hallelujah. And I'm not talking about hallelujah what you look like when you're born. I'm not talking about what you look like now. I'm just talking about the attitude that you and I might have that will turn people either on or off. Hallelujah. And the disciples, when they went to, us, to the coast, Jesus began to ask them, whom do men say that I am? Hallelujah. He wanted to know what people were saying about him. Hallelujah. Some say thou art the prophet. Thou art Elijah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You might be John the Baptist as far as that go. Hallelujah. And then he looked at them and said, but do, whom do you? So I'm asking you the same question. Whom do you say Jesus is? As a congregation, who do you say Jesus is? He's what? He's a living God, hallelujah. When he asked Peter and them, but whom do you say I am? Because y'all been with me. I have taught you all these years. Y'all have seen the miracles that I performed. You have seen how he me to raise the dead. You have seen me open blind eyes. You have, healed, you have seen me heal the leopards. You have seen me set pe people free. Hallelujah. But who do you say I am? Hallelujah. Praise God. And loud mouth Peter, the one we always criticize. Hallelujah. The one who was bad in other words uh, hallelujah he said but who do you say I am uh, and Peter said that our Christ the son of the living God hallelujah and Jesus looked at him and said bar Jonah hallelujah he didn't say Peter he said bar Jonah flesh and blood has not revealed this to you but my father which is in heaven uh, hallelujah to you Peter I'm going to give the keys of the kingdom uh, hallelujah in other words uh, you whoever you open up uh, the minds to to, uh, the word of God uh, hallelujah you're going to have the ability hallelujah to lead and instruct them and guide them in the way of righteousness hallelujah glory be the name of God uh, so I'm here today to tell you uh, that in the church you're going to have good uh, the bad and the ugly hallelujah and I'm not talking about a person's look hallelujah because today you all look beautiful hallelujah might be because I don't have my glasses on uh, glory be the name of God but y'all look good today hallelujah praise be the name of God and so he asked the question who do men say it that I the son of man am I, I want to know hallelujah and Peter gave the answer you might wonder why hallelujah on the day of Pentecost hallelujah with all 12 of the disciples there hallelujah when the Holy Ghost fell in the upper room the 12 stood up but only Peter was able to speak hallelujah glory be the name of God because he's the only one that had the keys before he received the Holy Ghost hallelujah praise be the name of God and we all know what happened in that upper room hallelujah on the day of Pentecost the birth of the church you all know what happened they said there came a sound from heaven like a mighty rushing wind hallelujah and it shook the house where in they were setting. Hallelujah. And the Holy Ghost came and filled the room. But what was going on in the room, all of them was of one cord and for one purpose only. They were waiting for the promise of the Father because the Holy Ghost said unto them, Hallelujah. And said after the Holy Ghost come up on you, you're going to receive power to be a witness unto me in Jerusalem. Judea and Samaria Samaria and to the uttermost parts of the earth and I want you to go there and wait in Jerusalem till you are in due with a power from on high hallelujah they went up there for one occasion but something else happened while they were there there came a sound like a mighty rushing wind and it began to shake the house wherein they were at hallelujah and they 
tell me the Holy Ghost appeared in the room and set up on them sister Pam and they said they began to speak with tongues as the spirit of God gave them utterance and this was the birth of the church hallelujah but I want to tell you what the church is and what the church is not hallelujah a lot of people call this a church no this is a place of worship cause a church is a call out a bunch of people that was called out for the service of the Lord hallelujah you and I are the church praise be the name of God and how do you know that Bishop Marmer that we are the church cause Jesus said that he was a foundation hallelujah and all gonna build up on the foundation and not only did he say that but it says that he's the cornerstone for anybody that knows anything about building you gotta first pour a good foundation a solid foundation hallelujah before you can start to put any blocks or anything you gotta get a solid foundation and Jesus is the foundation according to brother Paul in Corinthians it said that there's no one can lay a fountain that Jesus already laid hallelujah and not only did it say that that Jesus is a cornerstone but Bishop Marmer what you talk about I don't know a thing about building how are you talking about the footer how do you talking about the cornerstone you talking about a foundation the Bible said that Jesus is a foundation and we are the bricks and the blocks that build up on the foundation and because we don't know how to do it hallelujah he got himself there a cornerstone he said in other words I want you to connect up with me I want you to build on me and every stone every Christian in here is a stone laid on that foundation praise be the name of God for we are the church of the living God it tells us in Thessalonians that he shall descend with a shout of the archangel and the trump of God shall sound and the dead in Christ is going to rise up and if we are still alive we're going to be changed in a twinkling of an eye to be cut off to meet him but until that time we are the church of the good the bad and the ugly hallelujah glory be the name of God hallelujah said be careful how you build up on the foundation because every man's work is going to be tried by fire hallelujah if you build with the wrong kind of material it's going to be tried by fire and you're going to lose that you might not lose your reward but you're going to lose that what you have done because you built with the wrong kind of material and one thing I know about the foundation of Jesus hallelujah to be built up on that foundation you got to be holy you got to be righteous you got to be clean you got to be purified you got to be sanctified hallelujah and when you begin to build up on the cornerstone hallelujah don't y'all know the disciples hallelujah was first called Christians hallelujah they called them Christian because they were Christ like hallelujah that name stuck Christian stuck and that's what's hang on us today is a Christian hallelujah we act like Jesus we walk like Jesus we talk like Jesus hallelujah we put away our ugly ways and take on the ways of Jesus we begin to project him cause he said if I be lifted up I will draw all men unto me it's time for you and I to become the light of the world and begin to shoot let our beacon shine out hallelujah I wonder if the people in the community know if you are saved or not hallelujah by the way you act 
by the way you talk, but what you do in their presence. Hallelujah. My Bible tells me, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Don't you know we are representative of Jesus? We got to walk like him. We got to talk like him. We got to live like him. We got to stop some time and ask ourselves, what would Jesus do? We got to know how to handle. Hallelujah. I can't be a beacon out there and try to be a beacon here on that, but I got to let my light shine out there. I'm talking about the church. I'm talking about the good. I'm talking about the bad. And I'm talking about the ugly. Hallelujah. Now, if you good, get a little bit better. Hallelujah. Glory to the name of God. Hallelujah. If you ugly, you need to change the way you act. Sometimes, Sister Turner, people don't want to say anything to us because we speak so sharp, so mean. Hallelujah. Some of the most loving people should be the people in the house of God. But we act ugly. We act snotty. Hallelujah. We don't project Christ. Hallelujah. Somebody said it faster what Christ says. I don't want him. Hallelujah. But we need to shake ourselves and say, look at here. I know there's good and I know they're bad and I also know they're ugly. But my Bible tells me in the house of God are many vessels. Hallelujah. Some are honored and some to dishonor. Hallelujah. You see, just because you're in the church, that don't make you a saint of God. It's what you do, how you carry yourself, and what you say. Hallelujah. Praise God. You can't act like the world and, and tell the world they need Jesus. Hallelujah. You gotta be a living example. We are a peculiar people. We are a people set apart. Hallelujah. Somebody might ask you, why do you act the way you do? I got the Holy Ghost. I'm Jesus. Hallelujah. I belong under him. I'm projecting him. Hallelujah. I want Jesus not only to be seen in my life in here, but when I'm away from y'all, when I'm by myself or out among my worldly friends. Hallelujah. Praise be the name of God. I can't, Sister Turner, act like they act. I can't do what they do. Hallelujah. Because I'm supposed to be a light unto those in darkness. Hallelujah. Now I want to ask y'all a question. I'm going to get a little ugly now. I'm going to get a little ugly now. <laughs> Hallelujah. What you talking about, Bishop Mom? I'm going to get among my worldly friends and I'm going to act like they act. I'm going to do what they do. I'm going to say what they say. I'm trying to fit in, but there's something down with inside of me, Sister Pam, that will not allow me to act different than I am. If I'm holy here, I'm holy out there. Hallelujah. Praise God. This is not the only place, hallelujah, in the place of worship that we should project Christ. We should protect him in our home. I said in our home. Hallelujah. If you're in your home, you cuss your, your husband out. Hallelujah. Then come here trying to praise God. Hallelujah. Be careful. Be careful because your sin will find you out. You might cover up your head and your feet will stick out. Cover up your feet and your head will stick out. The cover is too short. Hallelujah to hide you. Hallelujah. I am and I belong to the church of Jesus Christ. I might act wild sometimes. I may fall sometimes. I may run around the church sometime. Somebody said the church said it don't take all that. Well, let me tell you something. I done that when I was in the world. What the devil had me do, I would do it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I wasn't ashamed about it until later on. Hallelujah. But I want to tell you something right now. If you lay aside Jesus Christ to enjoy the places of the world just for a season, you're going to be cut off. Hallelujah. Uh, if you build it, uh, you see the church. Uh, the church uh, is really you and I. Jesus not come back after this building. 
these beautiful window things, they might be beautiful, your pair of pews, hallelujah, not come back. He said he shall descend with a shout of our archangel and the trump of God shall sound and the dead, those that died in Christ, going to rise up first. Hallelujah. And by chance, if you're still in the land of living, it tells us in Corinthians, we're going to be changed. Mortal has got to put on immortality. Corruption got to put on incorruption. Hallelujah. You see, we can't go to heaven in the body we in right now because this body is a curse. But I learned what Brother Paul said. When we shall see him, we shall know him, for we shall be like him. Hallelujah. Sweeping in a city. Hallelujah. The city of the everlasting God. Hallelujah. I heard over in the book of Revelation. Hallelujah. When John was spoken to and said, look, I want to show you the bride of Christ. He said he looked up. He saw the new Jerusalem. Hallelujah. He said, I'm going to show you the bride of Christ. And we looked, he saw a new Jerusalem. Hallelujah. Because the heaven and earth had passed away. There was a new heaven and new earth. And here come the city of the saints of the most high God. Don't you know he tells us when we go to be with him, forevermore shall we be with the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm looking for that day. Hallelujah, Sister Turner. When you can praise God and not get hard. We, we can worship God in the beauty of holiness. Hallelujah. Red Foley made a song famous. Hallelujah. It was his. There shall be peace in the valley for me someday. Hallelujah. Everything is going to be perfect. The animals are not going to kill people anymore. And man is not going to kill the animal. It's going to be like it was when he made the garden of Eden and put Adam and Eve in the garden a perfect place a holy place a righteous place hallelujah so this building here is not going anywhere quit talking calling this a church it's a sanctuary it's where we worship it's where we meet God where we praise with God where we dance before God where we shout before God hallelujah glory hallelujah I want to say to the good get better get better I'm going to say to the bad hallelujah you know you put your badness off and put on more of Christ Amen. Amen. that song you took my old Tyler garment and gave me a garment a robe hallelujah I don't know I don't know where if Williams boys had this in mind when they said sweep around your own door but I heard the word of God said we're going to go sweeping through the city Ooh, hallelujah you know I might wear a little bit of gold on my fingers but it said I'm going to walk on the streets of gold oh glory be the name of God hallelujah talking about time we're going to have a time you think we had a time this morning brother Warner we're going to have a time when all of God's children get home hallelujah the black children the white children the blue children the green children whatever color they might be when all of God's people get home you're talking about a time hallelujah with all the saints of God gather around the throne of God hallelujah and you go before I do I got a little secret for you you can't crown him Lord of Lord or King of King till I get there and all the other saints hallelujah and when we get there hallelujah I don't know where I'm going to be standing when we put the crown on Jesus but I hope I'm standing pretty close I want to be as close as I can be so for me to be close up there I got to get close down here. Hallelujah. You got to prepare down here. I heard an old man. He worked in a factory. Hallelujah. He had been in this factory for many, many years. Hallelujah. He knew the exact time, exact time when the bell was going to ring. Hallelujah. For a lunch break. Hallelujah. And the young man looked at him and said, Sir, said, I notice every time. You know, 
know exactly when the dinner bell gonna ring, the lunch bell gonna ring, the quitting time bell gonna ring. Hallelujah. And he said, Hallelujah. How did you how do you do that? He says, Son, I'll tell you what I done. I got myself ready that I wouldn't have to get ready. So I keep myself ready. In other words, I know Jesus is coming, so I better be ready when he comes. It'll be too late. Hallelujah. Somebody's gonna be like the five foolish virgins. Somebody gonna be like a five wise virgin. Hallelujah. The wise one took oil. Hallelujah. He took the lamp. All of them slept in slumber. And a cry went out at midnight. Rise up, the bridegroom come. And they all got up and began to trim their lamps. Turned up the wick. Hallelujah. And the ones who had oil, their lamps was lit. And the ones that didn't take the word, and what it is, the oil is the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. They didn't have what they had need of. And they tried to buy from those who had. Said not so unless it not be enough for us. Go to him that buys and sell and buy for yourself. And when they went. When the foolish virgins left out. The five foolish. Jesus came. Cry with me. Midnight. And anybody knows midnight is the end of one day just before the beginning of the dead day. One minute after 12 is a new day. Is that all right? all right? Hallelujah. One minute after 12 is a new day. Hallelujah. So all those who were ready went in. The door was closed and locked. When the foolish came and knocked, and began to say, let us in, let us in. The voice inside said, who are you? We belong to, to Jesus. He said, I know you're not. I don't even know you. And you're trying to get in here? Only those who have already made this surf ready is in here and the wedding is going on. Hallelujah. I don't know your condition. I don't know if you're good. I don't know if you're bad. I don't know if you're ugly. But what you need to be seeking for that you may be like Jesus. I want to be like Jesus. I want to talk like Jesus. I want to live like Jesus. Hallelujah. I want to eat like Jesus. Hallelujah. Somebody said, Bishop, mommy, you take a lot upon yourself. Talk about you want to be like Jesus? Well, let me tell you something. We better start projecting Jesus in this life uh, or we're not going to enter into the next life. Uh, hallelujah. I want to be like Jesus. Hallelujah. You know, they used to, uh, a few years ago they were wearing uh, a band. Uh, hallelujah. What would Jesus do? Well, you and I better start doing the thing what Jesus do. Pray for the sick. Hallelujah. In treating men and women with kindness. I don't know why in the world we as Christians got to have an evil attitude. And we're supposed to be projecting Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory be the name of God. Hallelujah. I want God to take the ugliness out of my heart. Out of my mind, out of my person, I want him to purge me with hispa. I want him to cleanse me. Hallelujah. I even want him to get rid of evil thoughts that comes in my mind. Hallelujah. Bishop, you don't have no evil thought. Oh, yes, I do. I, I'm a human just like you are human. I'm living. I, I, there's two of me. There's a flesh and there's a spirit. The spirit is of God, but the flesh is still carnal. And the flesh has been cursed. So anything has been cursed cannot be blessed of God. Hallelujah. So we must. Brother Paul said, I crucify flesh daily. It's a daily process. If you think evil, I rebuke myself all times, Sister Brenda. Every time I, that thought comes to mind, I rebuke myself. Wake up, Melvin. You know that's not of God. You're supposed to be a pastor. And you let evil thoughts infiltrate your mind. Now I know if he does it to me, he'll do it to y'all. You might sit here and say, no, that never happened to me. Well, I tell you what, if the devil's not bothering you, you better check. You better check your walk with Christ out. Hallelujah. Because he's always trying to do something to make us fall. Because you know why? He came steal, kill, and destroy. And Jesus came to give us eternal life. 
I am the church. I'm building up on a foundation. And the cornerstone is Jesus Christ. And I know I can't go wrong, Sister Pam, if he's a cornerstone and he's a foundation and I connect up with him and he's a cornerstone down there, I can walk straight to it. I'm building up on it. Every one of you saints in here, y'all are, are a stone on that foundation. Lively stone. That's what Peter said. We are lively stones in the house of God. Yes, sir. I come here and I connect up. Now, now, why did Jesus first have a foundation? Why did he have cornerstone? Because anybody knows that you build a building, the first thing you've got to do is dig down and get a solid foundation. foundation. You got to pour that foundation. You got to pour it below the free zone. Hallelujah. Glory, glory. Hallelujah. And then what you got to do, you go to your corners. Don't ever try to build a building by starting, hallelujah, down on the ground and, and, and working over this way. You got to have a cornerstone. That cornerstone keep everything else in the place where it's supposed to be. So Jesus is the foundation. He's a cornerstone. So we are building up on it. Sister Pam, you done started. You connect up with it. I'm going to be here. And whoever's in front of me going to be next and next. And we're going to keep building everything. Sister Turner, she's there. <laughs> Brother Michael, he's there. Brother Warner, he's there. Hallelujah. Brother Carl's there. <laughs> but when we all get connected up. Come on, tell the bishop. When we all get connected up. Come on, bishop. You know there's a song we used to sing years ago with a circle being broken. By and by, Lord, by and by. It may be broken here because death is still in the land. But oh, when we get in his kingdom and we join hands, hallelujah, we can sing that song. Will the circle be unbroken by and by? And I can hear Jesus said, no, the circle will not be broken because you build up on a solid foundation. You got connected with the cornerstone. Hallelujah. So we are the church. You and I are the church. So when you hear him saying, I'm coming for the church, he's coming back for me and you. Hallelujah. Glory be the name of God. Hallelujah. But I don't want to hear him say this. I want him to tell me now. I don't want to hear these words later. Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I know you're not. But Jesus, did not we cast out demons in your name? Did not we lay our hands on the sick? He said, you said you done that, but I did not know you. I want to be known by Jesus. For me to know, get known by him, I got to get known to him down here. I used to be good. I used to be bad. And I used to be ugly. That was my lifestyle. Didn't smile. Carried a chip on my shoulder. You kick my dog, I kicked your cat. But one day I met somebody. I tried to fight against him, Brother Carl. You know the Bible says it's hard for a brick to kick against the wall. Well, it's talking, it's talking, it's talking about, it's talking about the stick, sharp had a sharp end on. When the ox was kicked back or something, he was jabbing. That's what it really means. Hallelujah. But when I met Jesus. And I said, Lord, I'm all right like I am. He said, no, you're not. But my mother was saved. You're not saved. I went for one whole year thinking I had the Holy Ghost because somebody told me I had the Holy Ghost. But honey, when I got sincere about it and me and my wife were living down on 4th Street, I went upstairs and I got down by my bed and I began to cry out to the Lord and I said, Lord, I want to know this thing for myself. I don't want to hear what anybody else is saying. I want to know myself. And all of a sudden, as God is my witness, I heard my wife come up the steps. 
I even felt her when she bowed down next to me. It wasn't my wife. It was my Savior, Jesus Christ. Because my wife was still downstairs. He said, all right. He said, my son, you want to know for sure? He said, I'm going to open up the windows of heaven. And I'm going to pour out such an anointing on you. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And he opened up the windows of heaven. Hallelujah. And all of a sudden, such a change come in my life over me. Hallelujah. I went from being good, from being bad, and from being ugly. Hallelujah. To being perfect in Christ. Perfect in Christ. And ever since that day, I haven't had no doubt that my salvation is real. And the devil wants to steal it. He comes steal, kill, and destroy. But I'm here today to tell you, don't let the devil deceive you. Don't let this building deceive you. It's a beautiful edifice. All the beautiful windows, beautiful. The pews are nice to set on, hallelujah. Nice rostrum to preach up on. But when Jesus comes, all of this is going to mean nothing to him. Hallelujah, because he's not come back after this brick building. Hallelujah. Although we are bricks being built up on a foundation, Jesus Christ being the cornerstone. Hallelujah. And when he, all of these stones have got in place, when all his stones have done what God has required us to do, he's going to, Thessalonians said, and he's going to descend with the shout of an archangel and the trump of God shall sound. Hallelujah. Now some of them might not know what a trump means. Hallelujah. But to the Israelites, the trumps meant a great thing. It was either a sound to war, a sound to worship, our, 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 our enemy it was invading. It was for a reason. Hallelujah. But in that day and time, he's going to crack open the sky. Oh, glory to God. He's going to stop in midair. He's not coming back to earth on this time here. Because he's coming after you and I, his church. The church, the real church. Hallelujah. The called out ones. I know you hear of the church in the wilderness. But there was no church in the wilderness. It was called out a bunch of people, but it wasn't the church. Because the church did not come into existence till on the day of Pentecost. I'll give you what, something else too you might want to think on. Nobody in the Old Testament had the Holy Ghost where it stayed up on them. It come up on them until they done what Jesus wanted to do and it, it would withdraw itself. That's when the David said, Lord, restore unto me thy spirit. Over in the book of John, when the Holy Ghost came, he said, not only will he come to you, but he'll be in you forevermore. Forevermore. Jesus don't take back the Holy Ghost. He's not an Indian giver. He loves you and I, but he don't like our ugly ways. Change your ways before it is too late. I don't care what people think about me. Where well, you need to think about it. If you are supposed to be a servant of God, you, you should have a smile on your face every once in a while. And for all you women get wrinkles in your face, I'm going to tell you how to stop having so many wrinkles. And don't anybody start throwing their pocketbooks either because it takes how many muscles to be uh, 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 so let me get straight now. Help me back here, sister. How can help me back here? How, what was that? Come on now. Come on. Listen. Did you, did you hear what Jesus said? Did y'all hear what Jesus said? 32. Now stop thinking of them, ladies. 32 muscles to make a frown. So then 32 muscles are putting lines in your face. But two. Now, I don't want, I don't want, here now, start, 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 but we're the church, we're the church, what was that? I 
I just want you to know what the church is. So what we need to do is pray for the good, pray for the bad, and pray for the ugly. Should we treat the ugly any worse or any better than the good? No, because you know why? Because Jesus looked down on you and I when we was wretched undone. And he came to our rescue and said, I don't know where you was at when God saved you, but I know where I was at. And I always tell the people, I was down in the midst of the filth of this world. And Jesus stooped down and took his hand of purity, moved back the filth, grabbed me by my dirty hand and picked me up, washed me in the hisp of his love. Hallelujah. Baptized me with his Holy Spirit. Then he said, now my child, you're able to run now. Hallelujah. Run on to victory. So if you are here today and you are not part of the church of Jesus Christ, you need to start to build up on the foundation and be very sure when you begin to build on the foundation, you use the right material because every man's work is going to be tried by fire and you might lose what you have built. You might end up being saved, but you won't have no crown because you did not build on it right. I am the church. You are the church. We are the bricks. The mortar is the love of God that holds us together. <laughs> the love of God is what keeps us connected. So what we want to do, saints of God, we want to put away our ugliness and put up more of our smile on our face. As this sister said, two smiles, two muscles make a smile, but 30 some to make a frown. So if you want some of them wrinkles to get out of your face, stop frowning so much, start smiling. No, I don't want women, no, the women, I don't want y'all throwing your pocketbooks at me now. Because in my eyes, like, you're all beautiful. Thank you. You're all beautiful, hallelujah. But the church is a church that when Jesus said, Peter, upon this rock, I'll build my church. In my closing, in my closing, I build my church. A lot of people make a mistake and said he built the church up on Peter. No, he built a church up on himself because he's a solid rock. He's a sure foundation. He built it up on the truth that Peter said about him. Thou art Christ, the son of the living God. Hallelujah. So saints of God, if, you, uh, are, are, if you're not a saint yet, you need to become a saint. You need to come out of the world of darkness and come into the world of light and get in the church and get the church in you. Hallelujah. And then you can say we are a peculiar people. We are a royal priesthood. We are children of the king. Nobody is no better than nobody else. I might be marked by title, but I'm no greater than you. I got to live the same sanctified holy life that you got to live. I got to serve Jesus in holiness and truth. I got to let the word of God be a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. And I must learn how to entreat everybody right. We can't have no respect of person. Even a problem with the drug druggies we have now. Or even homosexuality. We still got to treat those people right. Because that's what Jesus used to win you and I was love. Hallelujah. We are the church. So anytime somebody says, well, I belong to the glorious church. You better be meaning that you belong to the household of saints. Because this church building is not going anywhere. But we will one day. Hallelujah. Glory to God.